If you would have invested 500 rupees in Reliance back in 2009 till 2017, that 500 rupees would have stayed exactly 500 rupees. The point is that Reliance, which is one of the biggest companies in India, it gave almost 0% return for almost a decade. The reason why I'm telling you this story is that sometimes really big companies also undergo something called as time correction. So on today's video, I'm going to cover five stocks. Some of these stocks are likely to become multi-baggers and some of these stocks are likely to exhibit time corrections. These are my viewpoints. I will present a complete fundamental understanding about these different stocks. I will be a little bit quick because we have to cover five stocks. So you will get very condensed information. Also, there is a very interesting announcement regarding cash prizes that you can win. So there are five 10,000 rupee each cash prize that you will be getting. Please listen to this video entirely completely. I will make that announcement as to how to participate in that giveaway and what exactly is it that you need to do. The first key stock that I would like to speak about is Lal Path Labs. This is one of the most talked about stocks in the Indian stock market over the last one and a half, two years, post the COVID times. And it has given really strong returns. But unfortunately, the stock price now has corrected quite a bit. So let us quickly understand three or four key points. One is that what is it that the business does? Why the stock price has corrected? Where this stock is going to find growth? And what is my verdict on the stock? So I will cover these points very, very quickly. So basically, the company run diagnostic centers and there are variety of tests that the company undertakes. Right now, it is mostly a North India based company. So take a look at this particular chart and you will see that approximately 62% of the entire revenues for Lalpath Lab comes from North India and primarily Delhi NCR region. It has very little presence in South India. So there are massive opportunities for this company to expand in case it decides to undertake geographical expansion. How many testing center does it run? So it runs approximately 277 labs, which are primarily owned and operated by Dr. Lal Path Labs. And there are 4,731 collection centers, which acts as a hub and spoke model for the company. So basically what happens is that these collection centers act as distribution points. People go and give their samples to these labs and all these labs collect the samples and send it to a processing lab. So this is the primary business. All of us would be clear about it. Now let us quickly discuss point number two as to how much the stock price has fallen and is it the right time to buy this stock? So if you take a look from its peak, then the stock has roughly corrected as of now by 43%. So this is a fairly large fall. So the question now naturally arises is that is there something fundamentally off about the business? Is it going to become the next reliance type of business not giving returns for the next seven, eight years? Any commentary there? Okay, so let me quickly share my views. So there are two primary reasons for the stock fall. Number one primary reason is the withdrawal of COVID. So during COVID, what happened was that all these testing centers, medical stocks, pharma stocks, they all witnessed a massive boom. There was a sudden surge in their business a lot of people had to get tested and there was a variety of healthcare related expenditure that came in. So as a result, the business started to boom too fast. There was PE expansion of almost all the healthcare businesses in India and Dr. Lal Path Labs definitely benefited from that trend. So this was one of the key reasons which aided its growth in that 2021 cycle. Unfortunately, now the pace of growth is not matching up. It's not as if that the results are bad, but results are going to be bad when you compare it to that COVID era when everyone was seeking healthcare related help. So as a consequence, the company recently declared its results and the analysts were having a lukewarm response that hey, the results are not that great and the stock price fell. The second key reason for the drop in the stock price is fairly simple that almost all the healthcare related businesses in India are undergoing something called as PE contraction. When PE expansion happens for a particular industry, that industry benefits a lot or at least the stock prices in that industry benefits quite aggressively. And when the opposite happens that the PE is shrinking, a lot of money is coming out of that industry all the healthcare related stocks are going to suffer and Dr. Lal Path Lab has also become a collateral damage. So this brings us to the third and final part of the story that okay, 43% stock down, great time to enter or build up more of my position or downward average it, etc, etc. I would say maybe I will not give definitive response because then you guys hold me accountable if the Dr. Lal Path Lab does not start moving from tomorrow. So I'm not going to give you a concrete response here, but you can figure it out from my tone. So there are two, three points that I would like to tell you. 
So what you need to do is that you need to undertake a forecasting study for Dr. Lal Path Lab and ask yourself a simple question that is the business going to grow from this point? If the answer becomes yes, then yes, you can definitely consider building some position in this stock or downward averaging this stock. So there are a few key points that I would like to tell you. Number one, as we saw earlier, that majority of the business of Dr. Lal Path Lab is in and around Delhi NCR areas. They are expanding to tier two, tier three cities, especially in North India as of now, and they are aggressively pushing their business there. There are very clear plans that the company is undertaking. Second key point, health related insurance market in India is picking up. The entire healthcare infrastructure in India is becoming more organized, especially the diagnostic related business. There are two types of diagnostic services at play. One is called as preventive and one is called as curative. So curative simply means that once you get a disease, you have to go and get it tested. Then your doctor tells you that, you know what, take these, 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 these medicines to get cured. So that is called as curation, that once a disease has happened, you are going and getting it cured. Majority of Indians up until this point used to take curative services. But now what has started to happen is that people have started availing diagnostics even for preventive services. So Dr. Lal Path Labs has launched a series of different tests, series of different products around it, and they are pushing this preventive services and the company hopes that they will be able to make a lot of money through these preventive services as well. Now, these are not just basically my opinion. This is reflected into the balance sheet also. So let me show it to you what precisely is it that they are doing. So if you study the fixed asset capacity expansion of the firm, you will see that they have taken some of the highest levels of fixed asset expansion this year. And where are they spending this money? So you will see two headers where they are spending most of this money. One is that buying buildings or creating more physical infrastructure. And second is intangible assets. So what is the meaning of this and what can you draw out of this? Basically, this is likely to be tier two, tier three city expansion. And this is likely to be R&D expenditure in terms of creating new types of tests that they can push people to undertake. So the company seems to be in the right direction that they are actually spending money on the right type of assets to grow their business for the next two, three years. Also, let us quickly take a look at the operational matrix for Dr. Lal Path Lab and what you would notice is the number of diagnostic centers have been going up year on year. If you take a look at number of daily patients that they are serving, this is also going up year on year. So overall, the business looks healthy. It is not as if that the business itself is struggling fundamentally. So now does it mean that you should go and invest your money in the stock. I will leave that decision up to you. Let me know in the comment box in case you are taking positions in this business. Now with that said, let us move to stock number two, which is CAMS. And here again, let me do the same exercise. I will talk about three simple points. What is it that the business does? Why has the stock price fallen? And what does the growth prospect of the company looks like? So, okay, point number one is that what is it that the CAMS actually does? In very simple words, it helps mutual funds manage its business. Out of the top mutual fund companies in India, for example, HDFC, AMC, Nam India, etc. 10 are CAMS's client. Now, this is something that all of us know, but what we miss about CAMS is that the way CAMS defines its own business is very, very different. So take a look at this snippet and the way CAMS is defining itself is that it is trying to target the entire capital markets industry. What does this exactly mean? So for this, let me show you a couple of more graphics. So take a look at this chart and you will see that CAMS is actually ramping up a lot of business in the insurance sector. So it's not just mutual fund that CAMS is going after. It is going after insurance business also. It is also into ENPS management. For example, many of us put our money in national pension saving scheme. Now, CAMS is providing backend support for NPS business also. So the point that I'm trying to drive home is that there is a lot of heat left in CAMS business and it has several avenues for growth. So this brings us to second point that why is it then that the CAMS price has fallen and by how much has the CAMS price fallen by? So if you check it from the top, the stock price has fallen by roughly 35%. Now you'd ask why it's such a strong business expanding everything happening. Why is it falling then? So two primary reasons there. First primary reason is that the way camps make money is through AUM. What does AUM mean? AUM in very simple words means that how much total money the mutual fund is managing. So let's say that last year HDFC AMC in total was managing 500 crores. This year it has fallen to 400 crores. So is camps business going to grow or is it going to fall? It is going to fall because the AUM has shrunk. So the first key reason for the price fall of CAMS is fairly simple that the overall AUMs in the mutual fund industry has come down. Why has it come down? For the last one, one and a half years, the market has been in correction mode. 
stocks have fallen as a result mutual funds have also fallen and as a result these aum have gotten crushed and as a result cam stock price has also fallen the second key and more prominent reason for the stock price fall for cams is fairly simple that its lead promoter is selling stake in cams now this you can see from this chart that there is a lead promoter called as great terrain investment limited and over the last few years it has been cutting its stake and now it has cut its stake to 23.74 all the way from 31 percent so you'll say lead promoter cutting its stake it's a bad thing this that okay so please hear me out so basically this company is a subsidiary company of a company called as Wahlberg Pinkers so what is Wahlberg Pinkers it is a private equity firm private equity firm so what is the meaning of private equity private equity firms have a very simple model what they do is that they look for businesses where there is a lot of value to be unlocked now what is the meaning of this it simply means that private equity companies go and acquire or invest in companies where they feel they can bring a lot of management change technology change dunya bhar ke changes so they go and invest money in those companies when they are able to turn these companies around from falling to rising they sell some part of their stake or exit their entire investment the point to be noted is that when companies like walberg pinkas get into some kind of business and if that business goes as per their plan they are not looking to make like 15-20% fuddu returns they are looking to make 200-200% returns and whenever they feel like they book some profits so just because a private equity company is exiting some of its position does not make the stock price bad this is the key message that I want to drive home. Third and final point, should you go and invest in this company 35-40% down? Okay, so hear me out. The company has excellent growth prospects from this point. It is right now available at a good discount. If you're looking to buy more, should you do it? I will leave that decision up to you. Now, before moving on to the third stock, very quick giveaway announcement. What is this giveaway about? This is the Diwali giveaway and small case and I am collaborating on this Diwali giveaway. Now, how can you participate and what are the rewards? Let me quickly walk you through it. There are five cash prizes, 10,000 rupees each that is to be given. The result will be announced on 24th and the deadline to apply for this giveaway is 23rd October. Now, if you're interested, how do you need to apply? Okay, so here is what you do. You go on small cases website, you go on this create tab, you just click here and then you need to create your own small case this is completely free there is no money that is charged from you you just simply go here and you type out the name of five just five not six not four five stocks that you feel are fundamentally strong at this point and are available at a great buying price you go and type out their name for example tcs could be one of the stocks you add it here then you add one more name for example if you say itc i'm just showing examples you pick the names right you type ITC, then you assign some weight, whatever weight you want to give to the portfolio. Weight simply means that what percentage of your portfolio you want to give to ITC versus TCS, etc, etc. So with that said, you create a portfolio of five stocks. Then you save this small case. Now you have to do this through mobile phone app. Once you have done that, you go on this form. This form's link is there in the description box and you fill this form out. You paste your small case link here and explain your rationale of building this small case. Why have you picked these stocks? You explain that if I like the answers, I will pick five winners and the results will be announced on 24th. I hope you enjoy this contest. This is the Diwali contest and do participate. It would allow me to see that you are actually learning from this channel. And in fact, if you have been learning anything from this channel, do subscribe to the videos. It allows these type of videos to reach out to more people. So with that said, let us kickstart the analysis of the third stock. And the third stock is Tata Elixi. Many of you have asked me to analyze this stock. So here it is. So what is it that Tata Elixi does? Tata Elixi is basically a consulting service within the Tata arm. They are doing wide variety of consulting plus execution related work. For example, an easy way to understand this is what type of organization is McKinsey BCG been? They are strategy consulting organization. What type of company is TCS? It is a service sector IT player, yes, but it also does consulting and it basically does execution consulting. And Tata Alexi is trying to merge both of these practices. This is the portfolio of their work. You can go and read it. What type of consulting are they exactly doing? They are operational across wide range of industries and almost 45-50% of their business comes from media and community communication and another 40-45 odd comes from from motors or automotive space so this is the first part so now comes the second question that how much has the stock price fallen by and what are the reasons for that okay so the stock price has corrected by roughly 34-35 percent from its peak but important point is that you need to understand the reasons 
and there are two reasons one is a not that strong reason and second is a very very strong reason for the fall so i'll explain both so the first reason for the fall is that this quarter results have been bad so analysts are not very impressed they are saying that you know what business is getting hurt it has a lot of exposure to european business what not etc etc so the stock price has fallen due to recent quarter results second and more importantly why the stock price has fallen is that a lot of people believe that tata elexi was extremely overvalued so for that let me show you this chart this is the 2020 covid fall and if you map it out from the bottom you will see that, that the stock has actually given an 1800% return so if it has fallen by 30% it is not end of the world now do you believe that it is extremely overvalued undervalued what is my commentary on that let me quickly explain the scope of the business going forward as per my understanding so first and foremost point that you need to notice about the business is that its market cap is huge it's almost 45 50 000 crore it's not a small cap company that has gone up by 18 times it was a fairly big company to begin with so i do believe in the narrative that the stock price might be overvalued second key point for a company to grow quite aggressively what needs to happen that for a consultant based business it needs to do a lot of R&D especially given the nature of the work that Tata Elexi is in. Now here is the R&D historic chart for Tata Elexi. Unfortunately it is not spending crazy amount of money in doing this R&D. So again this does not lend a lot of confidence in its business. The third and final reason why I am not a big believer in this business is because of the market dynamics. So the way I see the market behaving from this point is fairly simple that we are at roughly let's say 17,000 levels. We will go to 18,500 there will be a breakout the markets will go up then they will dance around they might very well dance around for another two three years in a certain range whatever that range is it might be 21,000. so what is going to happen to a business like tata elixi you can let me know in the comment box and that is one of the key reasons why i've been saying that hey, it makes very little sense to buy overvalued business and according to me, Tata Elexi is one such overvalued business which can exhibit a lot of time correction going forward. Now comes the fourth stock which is Amritanjan. A lot of you have requested that you know what Amritanjan is falling this that. So first and foremost, what is it that Amritanjan does? Amritanjan is basically a small cap company with size is roughly two and a half thousand crores. So not that big. Point number two, it sells a lot of OTC, over-the-counter medication type of products. For example, pain relief balm. It is into a lot of pain relief management type of business. I had made a separate video on Amritanjan. You can go and watch it. Similarly, I have made a separate video on CAMS. In case you want to learn more about CAMS business, you can check the links of all these videos in the description box. So I am not getting into the details of Amritanjan's business. But to cut the long story short, they are into pain relief management. They sell a lot of product over the counter for which you don't need a lot of prescriptions. They are getting into beverages. So there are a lot of areas where Amritanjan is expanding. On top of that, right now, Amritanjan is a South India based player. It has a lot of scope to expand to other parts of India. So that is the positive news for the business that the size of the company is small. Geographical expansion is very much possible. They are already undertaking product expansion. So all these are positive points about the business. Now let us look at the stock price fall. How much has it fallen by? OK, so if you check the stock price has roughly fallen by again 32-33%. Almost all the stocks that I'm talking about, they have all fallen by roughly 35%. So now comes the natural discussion that OK, why is it that the stock price has fallen there are two primary reasons for that so number one Amritanjan is not a luxury based FMCG company similar to Nestle Hindustan Unilever etc when the inflation in the world went up companies like HUL were able to pass on the price increase to their customers and as a result their stock prices are back this is something that I was saying also since the last November and I was aggregating HUL quite heavily why because I knew that this is something that HUL has done well in the past and it will again be able to do the same and it did exactly the same but unfortunately for Amritanjan it does not operate in luxury segment it cannot pass on the inflation problems to its customers it cannot aggressively increase the prices of its product and as a result its operating profit margin has been shrinked so this has been a real problem for a stock like Amritanjan and it has fallen because of that now comes the natural response that hey is this trend going to continue so again you can find the answer in the inflation problem only take a look at the inflation numbers for India is it coming down or has it started to come down the answer seems like a yes which is good news for a stock like Amritanjan. Now comes the second reason why the stock price has fallen. Well it has fallen because almost all the small cap stocks have fallen quite aggressively. For example take a look at small cap index. It has fallen by roughly 11% when nifty is trading maybe like 6-7% from its peak. So it is quite possible that the small caps from this point are going to recover quite aggressively. 
Point B is that the run up in the small cap stocks has not really happened yet. So I believe that the small cap stocks are going to become primary contenders that are likely to give very good results going forward and they are going to reflect quite aggressively in the stock prices also. So it might be a great time to start aggregating some of these small caps. If you want, I'll make a separate video on that. So have I sold my holding on Amritanjan? No, not even one stock. I'm continuing to hold it. Even I'll aggregate some more. Now comes the final stock, which is Wipro. I had already made a video in case you want to check more details about Wipro. But I just want to quickly address one of the key things that has happened since the time I had made this video. Unfortunately, Wipro's results came and the company did not do well. So as a result, the stock further tanked by 5%. Now, should you start stressing about? Let us quickly discuss that. So very quickly, you need to understand the basics of Wipro's business. Here is what the company does. This is where the company is making its segmental revenues. It is present across different spectrums. It is experimenting quite a lot in digital operations, cloud, etc. And hopefully going forward, it will be able to find a sweet spot in at least one of these businesses. But right now, yes, the business seems a little bit unfocused. This is the exact same thing that I said while making the video for Wipro also. This is the first key important point that you need to understand. The second point that you need to understand is that the business is already exhibiting growth. It's not as if that its sales numbers have declined quite aggressively. Yes, it missed its sales target, what people were expecting, but that does not make the company bad. Right now, it is having profit related issues. For example, you will see that the profits are going down despite having higher revenues. Now, this is always a bad scenario for a company because then you start questioning the business itself. That will the company be able to survive? Does it have to fire employees, whatnot? So if you go and study the financials, what you will realize is that the company is spending crazy amounts amount of money in terms of employee benefits as of now. Now, if you're sitting in an IT company, you will laugh at me. You will say that what benefits are we getting? Okay, so I'm not getting into individualized debate, but overall aggregate number tells us that Wipro is spending a lot of money in terms of retaining and engaging its employees. Why is that the case? Because the entire IT industry has had to go through this turmoil of handling this employment crisis. Has it derailed the industry? Absolutely not. One bigger factor here at play is, and you can see this from the chart, that, that approximately 30% of the business for Wipro comes from European countries. That UK has been suffering one of its worst economic crises in its last several decades, which is a very bad situation for UK and a large part of Wipro's business comes from UK. So this seems like a bigger worry for the business, but over the long term, Wipro's business is profitable. There is no fundamental problem at play. If you have a holding period of two to three years, something like Wipro is going to bounce back. Why am I saying it? So let me show you some numbers also. So if you check the fixed asset capacity expansion, you will again see that Wipro is spending crazy amount of money in terms of expanding its capacity. It would only do that if it has hopes that it will be able to convert this expanded capacity into increased business outcomes. So I see Wipro as a successful business, but that does not mean that it will be the only IT company in my portfolio. In fact, I have much stronger faith on TCS's business compared to Wipro. But if there are multiple IT stocks that you are considering, then Wipro is not a bad stock to consider. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I do hope that you will apply some of these techniques and will create your own small case and will participate in that Diwali giveaway. Happy Diwali and I'll see you soon.